Good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning and pray that we can be a blessing this morning uh, as we read some of God's word and we would like to go to the Lord in a word of prayer and ask his blessings. And Father, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord. And we pray, Father, that the study that we've made prior to coming to church, Father, will uh, be blessed that you would reveal to us what you would help us to say and what the, the, the church might hear and be a blessing to them. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. In, in uh, Daniel chapter 9, we want to read some to you about uh, Daniel's little episode and then later uh, we want to go to Jeremiah if we can and, and try to uh, get a little bit more information about why Daniel uh, seen what he did and understood what he understood because that what Daniel saw had already been prophesied uh, several years before that and uh, we see here that Daniel uh, went into captivity at a young age and Nebuchadnezzar came down uh, from Babylon and took over the Israel and led them away and there are several things in there that the Lord told Jeremiah and Daniel and uh, concerning this captivity for 70 years. And so this is what we would like to try to read some on and teach you if we uh, have a leadership with the Lord. But in chapter one of the book of Daniel nine, uh, chapter nine, and verse one, in the first year of Darius, and and we, we would make this clear, you remember Darius was the one, was the third king, I think it was, but anyway, he was, uh, he was having a big party, and he was drinking wine and uh, having a hoorah with all of his uh, friends, uh, with the with the vessels that had came out of the temple at Israel when Nebuchadnezzar took it over, and uh, it didn't please God. And right. of course, uh, Darius was not as close to the Lord as. Nebuchadnezzar was because we'll see later on that Nebuchadnezzar was a was a chosen of God to do what was happening here. But anyway, in the first year of Darius, son of uh, Asuras, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I Daniel understood by books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Now the desolation of Jerusalem was that they would all, they would be captured. Part of them would stay in Israel. Part of them would go uh, to Babylon and be there. But anyway, we want to understand and see this here. He said in verse two, he said, he understood the book. Amen. And of course they had written down some of Jeremiah's prophecy concerning the same thing that Daniel is going to find and read and Daniel had got a position in the uh, what, where the king was at he had done uh, very many things and uh, revealed secrets to these kings and he had he had been placed in the first position under the king and so he had access to all of the books and all the things that was in there and evidently he was going through them or some of his uh, uh, fellow helpers was going through this and he said I found in the books and he says here's what he says he said uh, what Jeremiah had prophesied and he said in verse 3 and I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes and again we want to bring you to the, the your attention to this thing that he understood or he didn't understand and to understand he had to condition himself and he said he's with supplication with fasting and with sackcloth uh, uh, and ashes and and there their method of, of uh, fasting was one of the things was that they would sit in the ashes and uh, pray and, mm -hmm. and ask the leadership of the Lord. And so this is what 
Daniel was doing, and he says, And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by, by prayer and supplication. When I read this, and then in verse 4, and I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confessions and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, Amen. keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to him and to them that keep his commandments. Now listen this morning. This is this is this is the word of God speaking to us this morning, and it's directing us this morning when we when we want to draw closer to the Lord, when we want to understand what he has for us to do and all this, he said here, and I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession. Amen. First of all, this morning, we do have to realize that we are all sinners saved by grace and this old flesh that we have continues to sin and it does it and it does it and it does it and we have to come to the Lord and ask forgiveness of these sins confess these sins, and then we can pray to him and ask him for uh, the understanding that we need in order to take care of problems or things that are hindering us. And listen, this morning, we all know that we have problems and we have things that hinder us. And if right. nothing else, the old foolish thoughts of the body and the, and the foolishness that it, it puts out and the things that it wants to do is a hindrance to our spirit. Sure. And so we need this morning to confess our sins to, to the Lord God daily and hourly and, and be ready at any time to uh, pray to him because, listen, he's always sitting on the throne and he's there for us. And he's there willing to uh, listen to Jesus as he tells us what we're praying to him. Mm -hmm. And so this is what Daniel, and of course we'll see later on that Daniel uh, got word from this angel. And this angel said, hey, we heard it. We heard it. We heard it. So listen. Now, he says here in verse verse 5, after he is he has prayed for mercy and and uh, and love and 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 he says here in verse five, we have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from the precepts and from the judgments. Now I want you to see something this morning in Jeremiah forty four. If I can get over there right easy, I want to read you something in Jeremiah forty four concerning what he's talking about here. 44.4. <clears throat> Notice what, what God is talking to Jeremiah about. This is prior to uh, or after Daniel's writing, but listen, in verse 4 it says, how be it, well, in verse 1 the word came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews which dwell in the land of Egypt and dwelt in Megog and at uh, the other places. Uh, and the, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. And then notice in verse 4, How be it I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. Now this was after they had come out of Egypt and they were uh, should have learned their lesson, but listen, it didn't happen. Right. And it's the same way with our old flesh this morning. Our flesh uh, is a hard rock and it don't learn by being uh, punished, by being counseled and by things like this. It, it continues to go and do these things again. But anyway, He's, he is warning them. He sent Jeremiah, and Jeremiah, you look through the book of Jeremiah time and time and time and time again, he's warned the people, he's told the people right. and they're, they're sinful, and they come out of Egypt, and they turn right back around and started this worshiping gods and things of this nature that were made out of stone and wood, and they come again, and he says in verse 5 of 44, he says, but they hearken not nor incline their ear to turn from their wickedness to burn no incense and to burn no incense unto other other gods. In other words, they kept on doing it. Wherefore my cure and my anger was poured forth and was kindled in the cities of Judea and in the streets of Jerusalem, and they are wasted and desolate as at this day. Therefore now thus saith the Lord, 
the God of hosts, the God of Israel, wherefore commit ye this great evil against your souls to cut off from you man and women, child and sufferings out of Judah, to leave you none to remain. He says here again that he's going to do this thing to them because, uh, because of what they're doing. Now notice, in that ye provoke me unto wrath with the works of your hands, burning incense unto other gods in the land of Egypt, whether ye be gone to dwell, that ye might cut yourself off, and that, that ye might be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. And this is the thing that God accomplished uh, starting when he took them to Egypt, and they, they were led out. Right. And he, he, he tried to uh, uh, get them to serve him again through Moses and, and through Joshua. And listen, Joshua died, and before long, they were right back into this thing, and they're, they're down here now, and Jeremiah is begging and pleading to him and saying, hey, don't do these things. And this is, this is the same warning this morning to us and to all the people of our country, don't do these things Amen. that you're doing because, listen, I'm going to punish you. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get by with it, and people will continue doing this until the wrath of God completely pours down on them and just burns them good, and then they'll start screaming and start hollering as Israel did and as, as the Jews did, oh, forgive us, forgive us, forgive us. But listen, the thing of it is, will they stop it? Will they be sorry of what they're doing? Right. Will they bow their knees to God and worship Him and continue mm -hmm. to be like they should be, well, that's to be seen because right. I'm sure that the judgment of God is, is forthcoming with uh, our country this morning. So right. here uh, in verse 9, listen, I want you to ask, I want you to hear this. Have ye forgotten the wickedness of your fathers and the wickedness of the kings of Judah and the wickedness of their wives and your own witnesses? The wickedness and the wickedness of your wives, which they have committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, they are not humbled even unto this day. Right. Neither have they feared nor walked in my law nor in my statutes that I set before you and before your father. So this is this back in our lesson now this morning, uh, back in chapter nine of Daniel. Uh, and in verse 6, we see here what he says. Neither have ye, we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which have in thy name to our king, our prince, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, this is Daniel praying, O Lord, righteousness belongs unto thee, Amen. Unto, unto us confusion of face as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries where they have driven them because of their transgress, transpass and they have trespassed against us. Now, so we see here that that Daniel is, is, is understanding what he says here now in over here in just a, a, a I believe it is in uh, uh, the Lord. Uh, Daniel says here uh, in verse 24 of the same chapter. Now, this is this is after he had prayed to the Lord, and and uh, in verse 18 he says, "O oh my God, incline thy ear and, and hear; open thy eyes and behold our desolation and the city which is called by thy name." For we do not present our supplication. For we do not present our supplication before thee, for our righteousness, but for thy great mercy. Amen. Now he's getting close to God. Now listen, O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken. Do not defer not for thine own sake. O my God, for the city and thy people are called by thy name. And this morning, if you would think about this, this is one man praying for all these people and you say a lot of times I need to pray for this and I need to pray for that and I need to pray but they won't they won't do no good. Listen, if it don't do no good, you stand clear with God. Right. 
You and I need to pray for our country. You and I need to pray for those this morning that could be in church that are not in church. We need to pray for those that are not serving the Lord like they should. Right. And uh, maybe that, uh, that the, the prayers, I know the prayers will reach him and he might answer these prayers because he, he did Daniel. Because he said here uh, in verse 20, as he was praying, and while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sins of my people, Israel, Israel and present, present, presenting my supplication, before the Lord my God, for the holy mountain of my God. Yet while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, which was the angel whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, be, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. Amen. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. Now listen, this morning, I see this this morning when I pray to the Lord and when I am sincere with my God and my Savior. Listen, there is an answer. There is a, 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 a feeling of satisfaction from the Holy Spirit and it gives us the, the, the feeling of being secure. And listen, mm -hmm. that, that is that is like Gabriel here uh, uh, answering Daniel's prayer. And he come to him and he answered him that way. And he says and in verse 22, And he, the angel, informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplication, or at the, at the beginning of thy prayer, the commandment came forth. And I am now come to show thee that thou art greatly beloved. Now notice, if you will, in verse 23, at the beginning of thy supplication, of thy prayer to God, he says, the commandment came, and I am now come to show thee. And so at the moment, I believe here, what he's saying, that the angel's saying, hey, Daniel, as soon as you started praying, God understood that you were sincere, and he has sent me to comfort you and to tell you what's going to happen in, the, in, in later years. And I believe this is what he says, and he says, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved, Amen. therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined, of, and this is the vision, and this is what Jeremiah uh, spoke of. He said, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgressions, the sins upon, uh, that, that will be in Israel, and to make an end of sin. Now, this is when, during in this latter seventh, seven, seventh week, the last part of the 70th week uh, uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ will, will make his appearance, will come back, and I believe this is what he's saying, and he says here, and make an end of sin and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness. Amen. And so this morning, by, by me saying this is when the, the Lord Jesus Christ will make his appearance and come back, it's because and to bring in everlasting righteousness and that's the only way that this earth is going to have everlasting righteousness is the appearance of jesus christ and him rule and take over and 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 get rid of sin because he's the Amen. one that died on the cross of calvary for our sin and he's the only one that can can uh, uh do away with it and he says and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. And so this morning, this is what he saw in this. And now, know therefore, in verse 20, I know, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three score, which is uh, 60, see, it's, it's be seven seven weeks and it's be 67 weeks and then and two weeks is 69 
and the streets shall be built again and the walls even in troubled time. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, which was Jesus Christ when he was crucified, but not for himself and the people of the prince, shall, prince that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And so during this last three and a half years is what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to happen. That the city is going to be destroyed again, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, uh, and that's a flood of armies, and unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. And this is Israel, what's going to happen to them again, because listen, over here when Daniel, uh, when Jeremiah was preaching to them, listen, they went right back out into it, and then when Daniel prophesied what Jeremiah said, listen, they went right back into it again, and this is going to be the end result of Israel. Israel, Israel is going to suffer for their sins. Now, I don't, we, we, we've all said, we don't know what, what part the United States will play in it. I know the United States was, I believe, sent of God to support Israel and to help them along. I don't know what their, their part's going to be in it. I pray that the United States would wake up and quit all of this uh, killing of babies and, uh, and sinning against God and straighten up and walk like Christians should. I don't know what's going to happen to that. But anyway, this is what's going to happen to Israel over there. And he says here, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, which is the Antichrist. He's going to come the last the 70th week, he will come, and he is going to come into Israel and say, hey, I've got a plan, and he's going to order, he's going to offer peace to them, and he's going to say, hey, you can come in, and you can worship in your temple, you can do like you did back uh, in the old law, and you can worship like you want to, and they're going to go whole hog for it, and they're going to say, yeah, we got it, we got it. Well, now listen, just hear the other, hear Paul, just the other day or two, Israel, Israel is in the process, believe it or not, and, 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 and President Trump says it's not all done yet, but they're in the process of making peace with about three or four different countries over there. And so the peace thing is on the way, but when it says peace and safety, the Bible says, then sudden destruction. Mm -hmm. And so beware of Israel, watch her, Watch what's going on over there, and you watch our United States, what kind of condition they're getting in, and they're getting in a condition to where that they'll go right in with the Antichrist. If things don't happen, listen, if things don't happen, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to do their thing, and they're going to, they're going to run against Israel, because I believe in the, in the last days that the, probably the United States won't, won't, won't go along with Israel. But anyway, here he says here, and in, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice of oblation, or the, the, the uh, uh, time of uh, praying, you know, to cease. And for the overspreading of abomination, or sin, and filth, and ungodliness, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation, and that, and that determined shall be poured and that the term shall be poured poured upon the upon the desolate and so this is what is going to happen now I want to show you something this morning in, in Jeremiah if I can first of all I want you to see in Jeremiah 27 Jeremiah 27 and verse 1 no, both self. <clears throat> Notice this. Uh, not in verse 6. Verse 5. We'll, we'll go to verse 5. I have made the earth, and God speaking, and talking to Jeremiah. I have made the earth, the, the man and the beast that are upon the ground, by my great power and by my outstretched arm and have given it unto whom it seemed met or proper unto me. In other words, he's given this to whoever he wants to. Now he's talking about Israel. 
And he's give Israel to somebody else to, to govern. Notice, and now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar and the king of Babylon, my servant. Notice here, my servant. And the base and the beast of the field have I given also to serve him. And all nations shall serve him and his sons and his sons' sons until the very time of this land come. And then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. And so we see here this morning when God let Nebuchadnezzar come in and he took he took them back. He was in God's will. God gave him the permission. Now, in there's one other place I would like to read if I can find it. It's about uh, to see. I think it's 26, chapter 26. Uh, I, well, let me explain it to you because of time going out. But Jeremiah seen a vision, and he seen two fruit baskets, and this is Israel. The two fruit baskets represents Israel. And he asked Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, what do you see? And he said, I see a fruit basket full of good first ripened fruit. And then he said, I see another basket that's swiveled up and not good for food. And so the meaning of it was this, that this was Israel and all of those and it's in the word all of those that would follow Nebuchadnezzar willingly go down to Babylon and serve him was the good fruit mm -hmm. but those that stayed back in Israel and and tried to uh, fight and all of this and 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 live down there they were the they were the ones that were the faulty fruit and Zedekiah wound up as king, and so they took him down there. He was king of Israel. They took him down there, just to show you how the, the swivel food was. And they killed his sons in front of him, mm -hmm. and they punched his eyes out. And so this shows, this shows us this morning that God is, is in charge of everything. Amen. And if, if you will follow him, if you will, if you will, if you'll follow his leadership, regardless of how serious and how bad it looks, and this this rubs the old flesh pump raw, but listen, if you'll follow him by faith, Amen. I, I, according to God's word, you'll be on the safe side. Mm -hmm. And it may seem like that, hey, it's rough and, and it's rugged and everything is not going your way, and it may not, because I know those people that were down there in captivity uh, under Nebuchadnezzar, everything wasn't peaches and cream for them, but at least they live and they come mm -hmm. back out. Amen. And so this morning, uh, I hope that some of this is uh, will, will encourage you, because listen, we've got a God in heaven, and he is, he is in love with us. And we uh, need to try to be the same towards him. We need to love him and to follow him and obey him. And whatever, whatever uh, the Holy Spirit speaks to your soul about, if you're saved and he's, he's guiding you, listen, you follow the Lord. Amen. And I'll guarantee you, if, 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 he, if it proves wrong, then you can point your finger and blame him. But there won't be there. It won't be there. You can follow the Lord Jesus Christ and God and survive all kinds of trouble. Mm -hmm. And uh, you come out, uh, and if it kills you, hey, you're better off. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're serving God and you die for him, listen, and you're saved, hey, you'll immediately be with him in heaven. Amen. So this morning, I hope this will encourage you to... Uh, uh, when the uh, slaps in the face and the spits in the face and uh, the hard words comes at you, listen, let it bounce off like you had a shield of armor on. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's what the Bible says, put on the whole armor. So we thank you this morning for listening. Amen.